Today we're heading to Kyoto, Japan, where we'll spend the next four days exploring some of the best things Kyoto has to offer. Plus, we'll make a day trip out to Nara, where we'll not only feed the deer, but also visit a unique museum dedicated to another symbol of the city. The only thing on our agenda for the day was a sake experience I booked prior to arriving in Japan. Sake is a traditional rice wine that's Japan's most famous drink. The experience itself took place in the Fushimi district, an area known for its sake production and is home to over 30 breweries. During the experience, we were able to sample and learn about different sake varieties. We learned how to read labels and understand how to pair foods with each type. I'll leave a link to the experience in my Kyoto travel guide, which I'll link in the video description. Sake tasting was so much fun. We learned a lot. I definitely feel like I know how to pick out sakes now, or at least know what to expect when I see a sake bottle. But yeah, now we're heading back to the hotel. Just want to rest a little bit, and I'm not sure what else we're getting up to today, but it's such a nice day in Kyoto. So plug right there, USB. And there's, it looks like they mostly do USBs. Then another plug right there, a little desk. This looks like. Oh. This looks so nice. We walked to a cozy ramen shop nearby for dinner that's known for its clam ramen, which I'd never had before this trip. I honestly think this was the best ramen I had on this trip. The broth was light and surprisingly did not have an overpowering shellfish taste. Rather, it was a soothing, almost chicken broth flavor. If you add this place to your list, I highly recommend adding the yuzu condiment provided by each seat. It added so much flavor. The ramen was so good, our group came back twice during this trip. The next day, we took a day trip out to Nara, a city known for its historical importance, temples, and of course, deer. The Kintetsu Limited Express train takes 30 minutes to get to Nara from Kyoto Station. Limited Express tickets are not covered by the JR Pass and require reserved seats, which can be purchased online in advance or in person at the station. More details about how to purchase tickets from Nara to Kyoto can be found on my blog. Nara Deer Park is a 10 minute walk from Kintetsu Nara Station. The park is open 24 hours a day and is free to enter. The deer in Nara were once considered sacred animals and the helpers of gods. Today, they are still protected and live harmoniously with the people in Nara. In fact, a portion of the profits from deer cracker sales around the park go towards efforts to protect the deer. Nara deer are tame, but they can become aggressive when it comes to food, so please don't tease them. 
The deer feed off of your energy. As with all wild animals, it's best to approach them with caution and calm. It's easy to get a bit riled up when the deer surround you, but the more amped you become, the more the deer will match your energy. Overall, hide the food, stay calm, and remember that they are wild animals. You may know Nara for its deer, but did you know it's also known for goldfish? Nara is one of the three main goldfish breeding areas in Japan and one of the symbols of Nara Prefecture. So after feeding the deer, we hopped on a local bus by the park and head to the Nara Kingyo Museum. That's right, a goldfish museum. Goldfish serve as a symbol of fortune, luck, and wealth. They are traditionally a symbol of beauty in Japanese art and remain a popular focus of modern art and culture in Japan. Plus, during the summer, goldfish festival games are extremely popular, along with goldfish toys and wind bells. The city of Yamato Koriyama in Nara has a 300 year history of goldfish farming. In fact, you'll find the most varieties of goldfish breeds and mutations in Nara and Tokyo. When you're in Nara, look around and take note of all the goldfish symbols and toys in the shopping districts. The Nara Kingyo Museum is Japan's largest goldfish museum and has around 3,000 goldfish swimming through the art installations. The museum is home to seven unique spaces utilizing projection mapping, mirror balls, flowers, and more, all created by some of Japan's leading artists. After the museum, we took the bus back to the main shopping area near the Kintetsu Nara station. We walked around a bit and then made a stop to grab fresh mochi before the train ride back to Kyoto. Instead of having them walk, we're just gonna ride at one stop. And then this is the flat fare, so you can ride this whole thing for just the 250 or the 120. And then you enter in from either front or back, pay the fare when you get off. So, yeah, no need to touch the card. Get off my card. Next day, we visited one of my favorite areas in Kyoto, Arashiyama. Arashiyama is one of the most popular Kyoto destinations with bamboo forests, street food, temples, monkey parks, and more. I suggest setting aside a full day just to explore Arashiyama since it is located 30 minutes north of central Kyoto. Plus, there's no shortage of things you can do in the area. Located alongside the river in Arashiyama is a small restaurant known for its tempura bowls. It's a place that's been on my list for years but has always been closed the day I went for one reason or another. Kanpai! Kanpai! Everybody! So when we walked up and it was actually open, I was over the moon. Since our group was a little bit bigger, they sat us in a tatami room in the back. With a window overlooking the river and the boats floating by. For lunch, I had a local Kyoto biru and seafood tempura. To this day, I still think about the crab tempura and cannot wait to eat it again.
Most people stay near the central area close to the station, but if you venture up toward the mountain, there are many quiet temples, museums, and preserved historical areas. While researching Kyoto, you may have seen photos of a bunch of moss-covered statues. Those statues are located at a temple in Arashiyama. You can get there either by a quick taxi ride or by taking a local bus. The entrance fee is 400 yen for anyone over 15. The temple was renovated in 1981 and the head priest at the time was a sculptor who taught visitors how to carve the statues. There are about 1,200 statues covering the hillside and temple grounds, each carved by an amateur artist. There are so many various facial expressions, poses, and shapes. It is said that if you look closely, you are bound to find one that represents someone you know. After exploring the temple, I recommend walking down to the main tourist area through the Saga Torimoto Preserve Street. The street is lined with historical houses and buildings preserved in the style of the Meiji period, with many of the traditional buildings now serving as shops and restaurants. It's an incredibly peaceful path to take back to the main tourist area. are walking back to the main area of Arashiyama right now, walking down this preserved street and all the buildings are so cute. Before arriving on the main road, I recommend walking through the Sagano Bamboo Forest. I was pleasantly surprised at how empty the forest was considering it was late afternoon. It may be because this wasn't the main Arashiyama Bamboo Forest area, but who knows? Again, another reason why you should always leave room in your itinerary to wander around off the beaten path in Japan. We started the next day at the Yasaka Shrine, which is also known as the Gion Shrine. It's located between two of the most popular neighborhoods in Kyoto, Gion and Higashiyama. The shrine is one of the most famous in Kyoto because of the Gion Matsuri, a summer festival celebrated every July. It also sits in front of a popular cherry blossom spot in Kyoto, Maruyama Park. So we got here a little early, which is why we're kind of like wandering around this temple area and garden. But now that it's around 10 o'clock, we're going to head on down to the shopping area, look at some shops and then head on over to Higashiyama Ward, which is the street with all the preserved buildings. And I feel like they would like it. Located a quick bus ride or 10 minute walk away is one of Kyoto's most popular tourist destinations 
and Best Preserved Historical District, Higashiyama Ward. It's where the buildings retain their traditional design and you can experience old Kyoto. The small narrow streets are lined with a variety of cafes, small shops, and restaurants. It's a great place to find traditional Japanese souvenirs and try Kyoto's local specialties. The area is not very big, but you could easily spend half a day exploring the street and neighboring areas. If you want a clean photo of the area, it's recommended to get here early in the morning. However, keep in mind that places likely won't open until 10 a.m. Please also be mindful of your surroundings and be on the lookout for signs that tell you where tourists are prohibited from wandering and taking photos. If you're in the area, I recommend stopping by the Starbucks Usaka Chaya. It's the first Starbucks located in a traditional Japanese house. The Starbucks is tucked away and easy to miss because even the sign blends in with the traditional buildings and stores surrounding it. Once inside, you order your drinks on the first floor and can enjoy your coffee on the second floor, which has tatami floor seating options and a few tables. It's a smaller seating area, so it would not be ideal for big groups, unless you're lucky, like us, and are able to grab the large private tatami room. After a full day of shopping, we head back to Orashiyama for a foot bath appointment. Because when you travel to Japan, expect to walk a lot. We had some time to kill before our appointment, so we walked around the Orashiyama shopping street. Which has a variety of historic Kyoto shops, restaurants, and street food vendors. We eventually found our way to one of my favorite cafes that's tucked away off the main road, and thankfully is located right across the road from the foot bath spa. I highly recommend looking into a foot bath and massage in Japan. I made these appointments online through Kluke a couple of days prior, and it was amazing. They give you snacks and a drink while you soak your feet in a flower or matcha bath, then give you a 30 minute to an hour foot massage depending on the package. I'll link where we got massages in the Kyoto blog post on my website, which I'll link in the description box. My website will be where you can find travel guides with even more information and details of places visited in my YouTube videos. I hope these videos and my blog can be a helpful resource for my fellow Japan travelers. For more ideas of things to do in Kyoto, make sure to check out my other Kyoto videos. Links to a full travel itinerary and other Kyoto vlogs are in the video description. Until next time.